Governor Holcomb, thank you very much uh, for uh, giving us an opportunity to have a conversation today. I really appreciate it. But welcome to Indiana. Well, thank you. Today, Alliance for Automotive Innovation is, uh, we're announcing and uh, releasing uh, our first uh, economic impact report in quite some time. It's called Driving Force. Uh, it's really about um, the uh, auto industry across the United States, its economic impact, what's happening in communities around the country. We're excited about uh, not only the prospects um, and the benefits uh, of what we're doing here in the industry today, but what's going on uh, in the future. And as I think about that, um, and we start to talk about this more with policymakers, I can't think of a better place to come than the state of Indiana, which in my view is a microcosm uh, of what the auto industry looks like in America today. Tell us about how the industry is doing here in Indiana today and what do Hoosiers uh, take from the auto industry here today? So we have been not just the crossroads of America, but we've been kind of central in the conversation of the future of mobility since its very inception. And then to think about, as you mentioned, just how many Hoosiers go to work every single day in manufacturing and advanced manufacturing and in the automotive industry. And to think just about how exciting the future is. That's, we try to make sure that we're aligned um, with those companies to make sure that 10 years, 20 years, 100 years, a century from now, that we're still, this is our strike zone. Yeah, you know, I want to dig into that a little bit more. And of course, yeah. you mentioned Stellantis. I wanted to come back to that because yeah. I'm an alum mm -hmm. uh, of Chrysler back then and, yeah. and Stellantis today. And so I, I've spent a little bit of time in Kokomo and I can, <laughs> I can appreciate right there, you know, the importance of, uh, you know, of a company uh, like that to, to local communities. And so, you know, let, let's, let's talk about that a little bit more, the working relationship yeah. um, that you, you have with, with the companies. Um, mm -hmm. you, you need to make sure companies are here today, they stay here today, they're prepared not only for today, and right. in the but for the future. I'm gonna guess it's a bit competitive um, with regard to uh, perhaps other states that are looking to uh, invest in the auto industry. So uh, tell me a little bit more about how yeah. Indiana does that, yeah. continues to retain uh, and, and build the auto industry here. Well, it's very competitive, uber competitive, and it's it's the crown jewel. You're, you're, constantly trying to be this is part of the american dream is to own an automobile and own your own home to have a career based at uh, at one of these companies is generational and so we try to make sure that we're we have a close relationship constant relationship a complementary relationship which means we have to provide companies an ecosystem and an environment in which they can grow if they're growing our state's growing and then therefore our families can grow and determine their own destiny. And so we policy matters and we focus heavily on what policies can help the auto uh, industry, uh, the future of mobility um, drive, be that driving force that you mentioned at the outset in decades to come. So that means we have to have, they have to have access to talent. We have a role in that. They have to have a great site. We have a role in that. They have to have a, a cost competitive place to operate. And so the intangibles of having a, an environment that provides certainty and predictability and stability, hopefully continuity over the last hundred years. When you mentioned, you mentioned Stellantis or you mentioned Chrysler. And so, right. you know, you talk about a, a, a city like Kokomo and the resiliency and the, the ability to be nimble and adjust to global market forces, but in a very community minded way and to be tethered to our K through 12 school systems in multiple counties because we're not just trying to make sure they have the workforce of today. We're looking at the silver tsunami, the baby boomers who are stepping out. And so what will Stellantis or GM or Honda or Subaru or Toyota, have to name them all, what will they need 11 years from now, 12 right. years now? And so that comes right <clears throat> back to our education policy, our uh, STEM programs, our vocational um, CTE programs to make sure we're getting students at a very early age and then reskilling uh, folks mm. who may be looking uh, for a better opportunity. And when you can get connected uh, to one of our auto companies, many times you're doubling or tripling your salary. Mm. And so it's incumbent upon us to make sure that that 
we're turning have nots into haves and it's benefiting not just the company but the community yeah yeah i want to stick with this idea of looking into the future a little mm. bit as you well know um, the auto industry is in the midst of a transformation mm. uh, more advanced safety technologies going into vehicles uh, uh, more automation and certainly the shift to electrified yeah. vehicles and and uh, low carbon uh, transportation um, as you look at that um, is that an opportunity for the state of indiana well, it's, it's a huge opportunity and one we won't miss, uh, and uh, not on my watch. And, uh, and to think about, again, go back 100 years and, 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 and project out 100, where will we be? What will, what will it look like uh, to go to and from work in, in a vehicle? It'll be much different. And, and, and so we wanna make sure that um, once again, in electrification, that the the charging network is available. We're not out kicking our coverage. We're not out in front of the market or the industry, but we're working with them to make sure that they're not waiting on us. And being the crossroads of America, we've got a lot of, this is a, this is a test track, so to speak, <laughs> all over our state on every interstate that passes through. We additionally, for the companies, have to make sure that it's not just our road system and that grid, but it's our water ports, it's our airports, it's our rail. Is, is up to par for the needs of the, of the industry as well. And so we're making massive investments in, into our infrastructure program to make sure that the products can get to and from supply chain, et cetera, that we're looking at the tier one, tier two, tier three, and, and on down the line and, and what the needs are. And working with a company, and this is often lost uh, in the overall conversation, but working with a company to make sure that the community is a place where folks want to live. Not just work, but live. And I can just tell you, every, all of our five OEMs, are, we, we work with them intimately to make sure on various programs um, that we're, we're investing in a YMCA, or we're building housing projects or uh, apartments, where we need to get folks closer to the workplace. And maybe those conversations didn't happen 50 years or 60 years ago because we just kind of did it on our own and mm. got through it and persevered. But now it's a, everything is synchronized and we're trying to harness that synergy of all the activity that's going on, whether it be the state growing or the industry growing and where we're going. And so um, to, to put together an EV um, task force to make sure that we've got the industry, the, the consumer, the state government all looking at the same uh, opportunity uh, to be out there around the world courting the companies, be it battery companies, uh, to come here to Indiana to be closer to uh, their customer uh, in all these joint ventures that are occurring. So uh, whether it be semiconductors mm -hmm. or batteries or you name it, you mentioned uh, one of them, but there are a long list of suppliers and the companies themselves have the exact same um, vested interest in making sure the suppliers are up and running too, or they're waiting on their product. And so we're all in this together, and uh, the more aligned we are, the better the outcome. Yeah, you know, you mentioned semiconductors. Um, mm -hmm. So we've been challenged, obviously, coming through the pandemic with yeah. a supply demand imbalance, right? We have, we still to this day, I think, oh, yeah. certainly as I look around the country, struggle You're right. um, with regard to the availability of auto grade uh, semiconductors. Is that the case in Indiana? And, you know, what, what, what are there things that we can be working on together to yeah, we don't continue operate, to address on that? Exactly. Address we, that. we don't operate in a vacuum. We're not immune to global market forces. And, and we like to we like to determine our own destiny and take matters into our own hands and be part of the solution. You talked about opportunity before. This is a huge one for us. Because of our um, higher ed uh, programs, curriculums that are in place, be it Purdue or Rose Holman or Indiana University or Notre Dame, our Ivy Tech is our community college, single largest community college in America, Vincennes University, all working very closely with what are the exact needs of the industry and then we can build those pathways or those pipelines right into the employer um, directly semiconductors 
massively in, important to not just our economic security, but our national security as well. And so we've really understanding that globally, how do we turn supply chain pain into supply chain gain and get closer to, so it's just, it's, it's oftentimes just in case, not just in time. What I hear in that is not only a response to the semiconductor challenge we face in the auto industry, but a broader uh, answer to continuing to advance technology, but also Absolutely. also developing workforce, given yes. your, uh, you know, the tremendous uh, higher education system you yeah. have here, yeah. as as well as your your K to twelve network. So yeah. that's 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 terrific. Yeah, we're 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 blessed and and able to be again nimble to create the curriculum from PhD to GED. So looking ahead. What are your hopes and expectations for the auto industry here in Indiana going forward? Well, that it flourishes. Uh, and, and like I mentioned to you off air at the beginning, I know where my bread is buttered. And, and we, we're just proud of that heritage, quite frankly, and proud of kind of blazing the trail from the very outset and just excited about the way a consumer will get to and from work in the future, how they can maximize time in a vehicle through AI, through super, through supercomputers and, and data analytics and how the automobile itself is connected to be at the insurance company or your home or just the internet of things will revolve around not just the home, mm -hmm. but the vehicle getting to work and from work. And by the way, that gives you back time, which is priceless. If you can be multitasking in a safe way, uh, this is gonna save us money. And to be able to better, you know, um, better fuel uh, capacity, better, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Because as we go from, not just to electric, but hybrid as well, and that whole transition. And so we wanna make sure that Indiana remains what we would call the pole position. And we've got some competitors. We've got a front row, certainly <laughs> on that track, uh, which is good because that raises everybody's game. And at the end of the day, to be able to, it's a source of pride for me to be able to reach out to my gubernatorial cohorts and say, look, we're all in this together. If I don't get it, I certainly want it to be in the Midwest. Mm -hmm. and, and, we, and, and we're challenged to make sure that that's the case because at the end of the day, it's about the consumer. Mm -hmm. Well, Governor Holcomb, thank you so much uh, for your time today. I really appreciate it. Thanks for coming back home again in Indiana. It's good to be here. Thanks, John.